these are the animals which can be both terrestrial as well as aquatic that is why they are called as amphibian animals so the function of the operculum is to protect the gills peculiar features that is seen only in the case of amphibians that is especially frogs is that they have the ability to breathe through the skin Hello everyone a warm welcome to today's session on chapter 4 that is animal kingdom I'm Dr Divya biology faculty Vidyashram Pre University College Mysore Temple of Excellence So in the previous session we had studied about the kingdom animalia under which we studied three important subphylums under the phylum Chordata right so we had studied subphylum Urochordata subphylum cephalochordata and subphylum vertebrata so i had told you under vertebrata there are different types of classes that are present and what are these vertebrates vertebrates are those animals that possess a notochord that is they possess a vertebral column or a spinal cord so those animals having a vertebral column or a bony structure that extends from the head to the rest of the body they are put under the phylum or the subphylum vertebrata which is under the phylum chordata so today we shall see what are the classes that comes under the subphylum vertebrata so in today's session we shall start about class osteichthyes so class osteichthyes mainly consists of fishes so it is easy because once you remember the structure of a fish you can easily write down the characteristic features of the animals that come under the class osteichthyes so they are usually because i told you they are the fishes they are usually marine and they live in fresh water that is they can live both in the oceans and the seas and also they can live in the fresh water as well and these animals are cold blooded cold blooded means they are not able to regulate the body temperature like the body temperature will not change according to the changes taking place in the environmental temperature or external temperature so such animals are called as cold blooded animals and they have a bony endoskeleton so you might have seen a fish inside the fish there is the skeleton which is very neatly arranged and it is bony so endoskeleton inside endo means inside so inside they are made up of a endoskeleton which is bony and their body is streamlined the body has a proper shape so that it can cut through the water currents you know that the fishes and all they have to swim through the water currents and in oceans and seas the water current or uh, the tides are too much right so in order to move easily through the water current they have a streamlined body and the mouth is usually terminal so Uh, in the previous session wherein we studied about the shark and the stingray and all that i had told you the mouth is ventral that is it is present in the lower surface of the body right but in the case of fishes the mouth it is terminal at the tip of the head at the end of the head the mouth is present so therefore the mouth is terminal and they have a streamlined body streamlined streamlined body and also when we talk about the gills they have obviously because they are aquatic animals they have gills which helps them in respiration so they have four pairs of gills and these gills are covered by operculum operculum is nothing but two flaps that are present on either side of the head which will protect the gills so you can see here this part that is there it is nothing but the operculum so they have operculum so what is the function of the operculum so the function of the operculum is to protect the gills so the pair of gills which are covered by an operculum on each side and also when we look at the skin the skin is covered by scales so it is covered by cycloid or tenoid scales so you can see scales here so they are covered by scales throughout the body and these scales actually prevent the wetting of the uh, skin of the fish as well so the skin is covered with uh, cycloid or nitoid scales and also when the fishes rub around uh, against the rocks and all inside water they should not be hurt 
or they should not damage their skin. So in order to prevent that or in order to protect the skin, they are covered with scales. And they have an air bladder which regulates buoyancy. So in the previous session, while talking about a marine animal, say for example, stingray, I had told you that they do not have an air bladder. That is why if they stop swimming, they will sink or they will drown. But in the case of fishes, they have an air bladder. And I also gave the example of we going to swim in a pool with a tube. So if we don't know swimming, what we usually do, we wear a tube, right? So that tube inside air is there. So that air will actually provide buoyancy or the ability for us to float on water. The same thing here, the bladder of the fish, it is filled with air. So that actually acts like a tube. It will help the fish to float in the water or it will provide buoyancy to the fish. So and also when we see the heart, the heart is two chambered. It is made up of one auricle and one ventricle. So these are some of the characteristics. And when it comes to reproduction, the sexes are separate. That is the male fish and the female fish, they are separate. And the fertilization is external. So these fishes, they are usually oviparous. That is, they lay their eggs. After they lay their eggs, then the fusion of the male and the female gamete will take place. And then the uh, young fishes will be formed inside the egg. So therefore, the fertilization is usually external. That is, it will take place outside the body of the fish in the external environment. And they are uh, oviparous and the development is direct. Direct means without undergoing an intermediate stage that is without entering into the larvae stage or maybe becoming a tadpole or something directly the young ones will start looking exactly like the adult. So that is why we say that the development is direct. And next moving on to some of the examples. So some of the fishes are marine. So and they, I told you they can be marine, they can be freshwater and few of the fishes are ornamentals like they are used as decorative fishes in the aquarium. So what are the different examples under each of these categories we shall see. So marine fishes. So marine fishes are exocetus. The example exocetus, flying fish. So this is one example. Then we have hippocampus. Seahorse, so all of you have heard about seahorse, right? So seahorse, it doesn't look like a fish, but it has all the characteristics that are seen in a fish. Therefore, seahorse, that is hippocampus, is also one of the examples for a marine fish or for the example for the class Ostic thighs. And when we talk about freshwater fishes, we have labio, that is rohu, then katla, and claris that is magur all these are available in the market as well because we usually consume these fishes that is freshwater fishes and when we talk about the aquarium fishes the fighter fish which is also called as betta so fighter fish all of you know it is the beautiful colored fish which are colored in bright red bright blue and all that then tyrophyllum which is also called as the angel fish so angel fish, fish is also one of the aquarium or ornamental fish so next moving on to the next class that is class amphibia. So class amphibia actually is derived from two words that is from the Greek word wherein in Greek amphi means dual and bios means life. So they have a dual life that is they have two lives wherein one part of their life is on the land and the other part of their life is on the water therefore these are the animals which can be both terrestrial as well as aquatic that is why they are called as amphibian animals they live in aquatic as well as in terrestrial habitat and also these are cold blooded as i told you they are not able to regulate their body temperature according to the external temperature so that is why they are cold blooded animals and they have two pairs of limbs so far the classes that we studied under the sub Phylum vertebrata, they didn't have limbs. The limb starts actually from the class amphibian. So those classes that comes after this particular class amphibia, all the organisms have wings and they have a head and a trunk. So the body is divided into head and trunk. So you can see they have uh, two pairs of leaves, uh, limbs, sorry, one, one, two, and the other one on the opposite side there. So they have limbs. Then the body is divided into a head, it is divided into head and a trunk. Trunk is nothing but the main part, body part, so head and the 
trunk head as well as trunk and also in some of the amphibians the tail is present so salamander it is also an amphibian which comes under the class amphibia so they have tail and also the intermediate stage of frog that is during indirect development in frog the tadpoles though those also have tails so tail is present in some and usually the skin is moist and therefore it do, does not have scales why is the skin moist because it doesn't have scale so the skin of the frog is always moist and the eyes have eyelids so when we look at the eyes they have eyelids which opens and closes so just like how we human beings or the animals have eyelids even the frogs or the class amphibians they also have eyelids and they have tympanum which represents the ear so like how we have ears these amphibians they don't have ears but they have a opening that actually functions like a ear and it is called as the tympanum so they have the tympanum which actually functions like the ear and also they have a elementary kennel so therefore they have a organ system level of organization wherein they have a elementary kennel that is the kennel through which the food and all that passes those are the elementary kennel they have the urinary and the reproductive tract so all these that is the elementary kennel so the taking in of the food the formation of the urine and the reproductive organ everything will lead to one particular chamber and that chamber will open into the outside so it is not like in our body like we have the stomach from the stomach it will move to the uh, intestine and then to it will move to different organs and then it will go out of the body right but here it is not like that all the things that is food pipe or elementary kennel as we call all those uh, elementary kennel and uh, the urinary tract so where the urine goes into where the reproductive uh, organs develop or the reproduction actually takes place so all those tract they open into one particular chamber which is present at the so somewhere here maybe one chamber it will open and then it will move out of the organism so it will open to the exterior so that is one important feature of the class amphibians and next here and if you consider respiration in the case of amphibians they can respire by using three different organs that is they can respire by using gills they can respire by lungs and also one of the peculiar features that is seen only in the case of amphibians that is especially frogs is that they have the ability to breathe through the skin so uh, skin is also an organ which helps in the process of respiration or breathing in the case of the class amphibians and when we see the heart so in ostic thighs i had told you the heart is two chambered right it has a auricle and a ventricle but in the case of the amphibians they have a three chambered heart wherein they have two auricles so two auricles are present and one ventricle is present so here itself you can see the difference they all the others were just two chambered here they are from the class amphibians it is three chambered then moving on to four chamber as such so coming on to reproduction so reproduction here also the male and the female are separate that is the male reproductive organ is present in one organism and the female reproductive organ is present in other organism therefore the sexes are separate and fertilization is external here also the frogs they lay the egg once they lay the egg then the fertilization that is the fusion of the gametes will take place and then it will develop into a new organism and also when i say they develop into a new organism here the development is indirect so one more thing is they are oviparous as i had mentioned they are egg laying so they lay eggs and after they lay eggs actually then the fertilization will take place and then the tadpole comes out so that tadpole actually doesn't look like a frog can you see here it doesn't represent it doesn't at all represent like a so if i had removed this legs no it would look like a stingray or something baby stingray so that is why i said it doesn't look like the adult frog so therefore the development is indirect and later after they finish the tadpole stage and then they become a adult then they will look like the the parents or the adult frog until then they do not look like the adult frog so that is why the development is indirect so i have shown here the picture of a tadpole so this is the indirect development in the case of amphibians or the frogs so next moving on to the 
example so under frog there are different examples such as buffo that is buffo is one of the largest frog species that can be seen it is also called as the toad then we have rana that is the common frogs that we see now and then that is nothing but rana and then we have hyla which is tree frog which is abundantly found in the western ghat regions and salamandra the or salamander so these are also the amphibians and also ichthyopus which are the limbless amphibians so these are the different examples under the class amphibia so we shall study about the next class that is class reptilia so reptilia is derived from the latin language that is wherein in latin repir or reptum means to creep or crawl so these animals they do not run or walk or jump like how we do they usually move from one place to another by creeping and crawling so this is one of the important characteristic to distinguish class reptilia from the other organisms and they are mostly terrestrial animals that is they live on land and land is their main habitat and they are poikilotherms that is they are not able to regulate the body temperature they are poikilotherms and the body is covered by dry and cornified skin as well as epidermal scales or scutes so we can understand that these organisms they usually creep and crawl on the floor that is on the land right so on the land we have thorny plants there are rocks which are very sharp the land surface is very rough so when these animals creep and crawl on such conditions their skin should not tear or they should not damage their body parts right so in order to prevent them they have very thick and dry skin and the skin sometimes is also scaly and it is covered by scutes it is also scaly or it is covered by the scutes and also they do not have an external ear opening so here you can ask me ma'am they do not have an external ear ear opening and the tympanum is present which represents the ear so can you see here it is very clearly seen tympanum so they could have put uh, frogs and uh, these reptiles that is the lizard snake and all under one organ one group right why because these are completely terrestrial but frogs they are living both in water as well as land so that is when they classified these uh, organisms under class reptilia separately so tympanum is present instead instead of ears which acts like a hearing organ and also they have limbs and they are usually in two pairs that is they have the fore limbs and the hind limbs so it is usually in two pairs and the heart is three chambered just like the frog so remember this is one important thing here there is one peculiar feature in crocodile crocodile also belongs to the class reptilia but in crocodiles the heart is four chambered rest all the reptiles be it the snake the lizards the uh, dragons and all those reptiles the heart is three chambered just like class amphibians but only crocodiles have four chambered heart but you could have asked me then why did they put the crocodiles under the class reptilia why because apart from only one feet, uh, change in the heart chamber rest all the characters are matching with that of the other organisms that are placed under the class reptilia so that is why the that one character has been neglected and the, in spite of crocodiles having a four chambered heart they have placed them in the class reptilia so the heart in reptiles is usually three chambered but when it comes to crocodiles they have four chambered heart and they also one of the most important feature of the class reptilia is they shed their skin so you might have seen the snakes they shedding their skin right so snakes and lizards and all that they shed their skin that is they shed their scales as skin cast and that particular skin that is being shed is called as a skin cast cast is nothing but a covering so they shedding the skin covering this is one of the peculiar features of the class reptilia 
So next moving on to reproduction, here also the sexes are separate, that is the male uh, animal is separate and the female animal is separate. So the sexes are separate and the fertilization is internal. So, so uh, in amphibians, the fertilization was ex external, right? In the case of uh, reptilians, reptilians also are oviparous, that is egg laying animals, but the fertilization, that is the fusion of the male and the female gamete will take place inside the body of the animal itself. That is why the fertilization is internal and they are oviparous and the development is direct. In amphibians, the development was indirect, right? Wherein they had an intermediate stage of the organism. But in the case of uh, reptilia, the development is direct. So the baby, can you see here, the baby turtle that has come out of the egg looks exactly similar to that of the parent. So therefore, the development is direct development. So we shall move on to the next that is example. So there are a lot of examples that are present under the class Reptilia. I have mentioned a few of them here. So we have Chelon that is turtle, then Testudo which is tortoise. Tortoise is one of the longest living animal. And we have Chameleon that is tree lizard. Chameleon has the ability to change its color whenever there is a threat so that it can blend with the uh, habitat which uh, on whichever it is. So, calotes, that is the garden lizard, commonly everyone has seen this garden lizard. Then, crocodilus, that is crocodile. Then, alligator. Then, hemidactylus, that is wall lizard, which we all hate, wall lizard. And poisonous snakes, that is naja, it's called naja naja, that is nothing but cobra. Under poisonous snakes, we have cobra, we have crate, then the viper. Apart from that, different uh, snake, a uh, variety of snake species are there, few I have mentioned you. So all these turtle, tortoise, lizard species, then we have crocodiles, alligators, then snakes, all others come under the class reptilia. And remember what I had told you, all these organisms except the crocodile, they have three chambered heart. Only the crocodile has a four chambered heart. And next moving on to the class aves. So class aves, it is the one of the most beautiful classes which we all love. We love birds, right? They're beautiful, the most vibrant colors and also they have some peculiar features which other organisms do not have. These aves or the avian creatures, aves means the one who have the ability to fly. Aviation industry means Aeroplane, something related to the aeroplane, it can fly. You can remember like that. So, class A's means the birds, they can fly. So, these are warm blooded, that is, they are homeothermous, means they can regulate their body temperature. So, if it outside is hot, they can regulate the body temperature. If it is cold outside, again, they can re regulate the internal body temperature. So, therefore, they are warm blooded. So, it is also called as homeothermous. They are homeothermous. And they are able to maintain, that is they are able to maintain a constant body temperature. And also one of the important characteristics is it is easy for you to remember because when I say reptiles, you can just close your eyes and imagine a reptile and write the features. When I say birds, you can close your eyes, a bird's picture will come in front of you and look, just imagining that you can write the features, it is easy. They have feathers and they can fly. But among them, there are also birds which have feathers but cannot fly. They are called as the flightless birds. Example, we have ostrich, emu, all that, they do not fly. So, presence of feathers, so flying is not just one characteristic of a bird, but the, you have to write the presence of feathers is a characteristic. Why? Because all birds have feathers, but there are few birds which have feathers but cannot fly and there are birds which can fly. So therefore, and one more characteristic feature is the beak. So you can see here, they have the beak, then they have feathers, feathers, beak and also they have wings, right? So birds, they do not have four limbs. They have only two limbs. Why? Because during the process of evolution, it got modified. So actually what happened was birds, 
in order to escape from the predators they started to run very fast it was said that according to scientists or according to the um, old uh, uh, like evolutionary studies what uh, scientists have done what they found out was the birds were earlier having four legs but what happened was in order to protect themselves from the predators they started to run when the predators came to uh, attack them so when they started to run what happens those uh, during the process of evolution uh, it was like they don't need limbs means they only two limbs are enough for them the other two limbs let it be converted into a feather so that is how those limbs became a feather it got converted into wings sorry wings it got converted into wings so the four limbs are nothing are modified into wings so the birds usually have hind limbs that is the wing limbs that are present at the back but the limbs that are present at the front that is the four limbs they were the ones uh, imagine uh, you bend yourself uh, that is uh, you bend yourself like an animal and try to walk like we all do no like try to walk like an animal uh, with the hands as well as our legs is it easy to run fast no right then just get up and then run only with your legs you can run very fast the same thing happened here birds they were not able to run very fast with the four legs so what they used to do was they started folding the front uh, four legs and using only their hind legs that is when those uh, wing those legs got converted into wings so the four limbs they are nothing but modified into wings so we have they have two wings or a pair of so they have so they have two wings so next moving on to the next structure that is the hind limbs so the hind limbs generally they have scales so scales because to protect the feet that is why they have scales and they are modified for walking and hind limbs got modified so these are the hind limbs so those limbs that were present at the front earlier during the early years those which were present at the front they got modified into wings and the hind limbs it got modified into legs so that is which is which can be used for the hind limbs they usually have scales and they got got modified into legs which are helpful for walking for swimming and to hold on to the tree branch whenever the bird sit on a branch they should not fall off so in order to hold on to the tree branch that is clasping the tree branches for all this they will help and also like the reptiles these organisms that is the class aves also have dry skin but they do not have glands only they have the oil gland so you might have seen birds whenever there is rain they will sit on a tree and they will start pecking on their skin so when they peck on the skin what happens the oil glands that are present on the skin will secrete the oil that oil will spread to the uh, wings and it will act as a waterproof substance so you know that on oil if you pour water the surface will even still be dry because oil and water they ripple from each other that is why so here same thing happens so the oil which will form a base or a coat on the wings therefore the bird will not get wet so the skin is dry without glands except for the oil glands which is present at the base of the tail so they will start pecking the uh, tail region so that the oil glands will secrete the oil and it will spread over to the entire feathers of the body surface so this is one of the important characteristics of the birds or the class aves so next we come moving to the endoskeleton so they have a endoskeleton so they have a skeleton that is present inside the body and it is completely ossified means it is bony it is completely ossified it is bony and they are long bones and hollow bones now here this is one of the important features hollow bones why hollow bones is because bird should fly right they are animals which are capable of flight so when they fly they should not be heavy so in order to prevent that they have hollow bones with air cavities so therefore birds have pneumatic bones what are pneumatic bones those bones which are hollow filled with air cavity are called as pneumatic bones and because of the presence of pneumatic bones the birds are very light in weight 
and also they have a digestive tract so therefore the birds have a organ system level of organization wherein they have a digestive tract and this digestive tract has additional chambers apart from the stomach they have additional chambers such as the crop and the gizzard so these are the additional digestive tracts that are present in the birds that is called as crop and gizzard so next heart heart is completely four chambered so the heart is completely four chambered two auricles and two ventricles will be present and the respiration is mainly by lungs and here the air sac is connected to lungs to supplement respiration that is whatever air sac is there it will be connected to the lungs and that also helps in the respiration process so the main organ for respiration used by birds is lungs next moving on to the reproduction so here the male and the female birds are separate so usually you might have seen the female birds they are usually not that brightly colored but the males are very very brightly colored so the sexes are separate and fertilization is internal that is the fusion of the male and the female gamete will take place inside after the fertilization then the birds will lay the eggs so therefore they are oviparous and here also the development is direct that is they look almost exactly to the adult so it is direct development so moving on to some of the examples so we have the common birds have listed here we have corvus which is crow then columbia it is pigeon pitacula that is parrot then struthio which is ostrich pavo peacock aptenodites that is penguin neophron which is nothing but vulture so neophron it is one word here so neophron it is nothing but vulture so these are some of the examples apart from this there are a wide variety of species of birds that exist the most common ones we have listed here so next moving on to the important class that is class mammalia so we human beings also come under the class mammalia so the name itself suggests we have mammary glands that is why we are called as mammalians and we have the ability to give birth to young ones we are we do not lay eggs we directly give birth to the young ones so mammalians are found everywhere they are found in all the kinds of environmental conditions so they are usually found in polar ice caps you can find mammals in deserts mountains polar ice caps we have the polar bear right they are mammalians and deserts camel they are mammalians kangaroo rat kangaroo all these are mammalians mountains usually uh, the mountain lions maybe the nil guys uh, which live on the mountain so all these are also mammals and forest forest we find a abundant amount of different organisms uh, belonging to class mammals like the tiger the giraffe the cheetah all these and next is grassland so giraffe not in forest sorry in grasslands we have the giraffe being present then zebras they are also mammals and also in the dark caves so dark caves also these mammals will be present and some of the mammals they have the ability to fly or live in water so therefore they are found everywhere they are found in air as well as in water on land again in land they are found in different environmental conditions or habitats so some of them they have adapted to fly and also live in water and they are homeothermous so homeothermous means they have the ability to regulate their body temperature according to the external environment so they are homeothermous and they are milk producing that is they have mammary glands and these mammary glands produce milk and the milk the young ones that is the babies are provided nutrition especially or nourishment through these mammary glands so mammary glands is one of the important feature that classifies the organism mammalians or class mammalia next they have two pairs of limbs and that is four limbs are there even we human beings we have four limbs right but two limbs we use it for no, not for walking but for other purposes and the legs we we'll use it for the walking purposes so therefore all the mammals have two pairs of limbs that is four limbs are present and they are adapted for walking for running climbing burrowing swimming or flying so for all these it is used and we human beings so we use it for different purposes okay so next moving on to the skin so the skin is unique that is mammals they have hairs 
So, so far all the organisms that we studied under the subphylum vertebrata, they did not have hair on the body. Either they had scales or the skin was rough, they were made up of scoots or so on. But class mammalia, one of the major feature is that the, the skin is also covered by hair, it is covered by hair and we have external ears. So far, what organisms we studied, they did not have external ears. What did they have? That is especially amphibians and reptilians. They had ear-like openings which were called as tympanum. But we have proper external ears which are also called as pinnae. Pinnae are present, that is external ears are present. So there is a difference between pinnae and tympanum. Okay. And also different types of teeth are present in the jaw, right? We have the canine teeth, we have molar, we have premolar, all those different teeth are present. So different teeth and wisdom tooth, all that, right? So different types of teeth are present in the jaw. And also the heart is four chambered. So two auricles and two ventricles, therefore it is four chambered and respiration is mainly by lungs. And the sexes are separate and fertilization is internal. So here the development of the fetus will take place inside the body of the organism and then the baby will be delivered, right? So therefore the sexes are separate, fertilization is internal and they are viviparous, that is they give birth to, so those organisms which lay eggs are oviparous, those organisms which give birth to young ones are viviparous. So mammalians are viviparous only with a few exceptions and the development is Direct. There is no intermediate development like the tadpoles or the larvae or something else. Development is direct. So it is direct development. So next we shall study about few examples. So here divided the example into oviparous and viviparous animals. So I told you while explaining about the class mammalia, there are few exceptions where few of the animals are egg laying, that is oviparous. Rest all the mammals are viviparous, that is they give birth to the young ones. So oviparous, the best example is platypus. So platypus, you could you can ask me, they can they could have put platypus under reptiles, right? Why didn't they do so? Because again here, reptiles don't have hair and they don't have a pinna or an external ear, which these animals have. Or they could, you could have also ask me, you could have put them under amphibians because they live both on land as well as water. Again here, the body characters is also one, is different entirely. So that is why they have placed it under mammalians. So ma uh, viviparous, rest all the mammals are viviparous. So we have macropus, that is kangaroo, teropus, which is flying fox. Then we have camelus, that is camel, macaca, the monkey, ratus, rat, then canis, dog, felis, which is cat, then elephant, then we have horse, then uh, the dolphin, the blue whale, tiger, panther, leo. So blue whale, you could have asked me, ma'am, blue whale, they could have clubbed it with the stingrays, the shark and all that, right? No, why? Because blue whales, they are mammals. In spite of them being aquatic and having exactly the features, what the uh, stingrays and the shark and all that those have but the main important feature is blue whale have blue whale they are mammals that is why they have placed it under the class mammalia and blue whales they do not have hair on their skin but the only reason why it is placed is because they are they give birth to young ones that is why so these are some of the examples of the class mammalia so uh, in today's session, we had studied about the different classes under the subphylum vertebrata. So we studied about class Ostictis, class Aves, then class Reptilia, class Amphibians, class Mammalia. So I hope you understood the session well. So uh, we shall meet in the next chapter. That is uh, for the next coming session, we will take up a new chapter. So we will meet then. Thank you.